Good morning, Kaylin. Well, hello, Dr. Cynthia. I'm Kaylin, everybody. <laughs> I'm Dr. Cynthia. This is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast, where we invite you to come for the chat and stay for the booze. <laughs> Yay! We're talking about ghosts this month. So all month, we're talking about ghosts, ghost stories, but more importantly, we're talking about I ain't afraid of no ghost. Yes. You know, how to engage, how to step into your power as a human being. You are senior to anybody that doesn't have a body. And I'm teaching you cool tips and tricks and techniques, tools for living to, to handle all this. And then ultimately, by week four, you're going to be having fun. So, what you got, Kaylin? Yes. Oh, you know, I wanted to, I had to bow out early last week. I'm looking up something I looked up for us earlier. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So I had to bow out a little early last week and pick up Laura. It wasn't too Mm -hmm. early, but I know um, that you had talked about like it's certainty, right? Like if you have that certainty and that is something that I, we can all work on all day, every day, myself included. Oh, 101 Um, uses. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I need to, you know, I, I literally have like replayed that all this past week because that is, it's, you have to be certain Mm -hmm. of yourself. And the reason I wanted to touch on that was because, you know, we invited, um, the beings without bodies onto the stage. Yes. And, you know, I didn't see anything at first. And at this point, and hopefully I'll, I'll grow and learn some new mm-hmm. you know, tips and tricks from you. Right. But at this point, like who I saw was who I wanted to see. You know what I mean? I was so certain that this mm-hmm. is who I want to be. This is who I, yeah. I file, mm-hmm. but nobody was there at first. Okay. So that's not, it, un- that's not unusual. No, it's not. And that's kind of why I wanted to, obviously I, I didn't want to interrupt, uh-huh. <laughs> but that was at first, there was not anybody there. And then I got to thinking like, well, who do I want to see, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's the certainty thing. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to touch on that. And then, um, fun facts. So you had asked, you had said something about, um, what ghost and spirit is in other languages. Mm-hmm. So I found a couple. Okay. Google tells me. I love uh, Google. Yes. Brazilian Portuguese. You know, I'm not going to pronounce it right. Fantasma. Oh. P-A-S-M-A. Fantasma. Like a phantasm. That was my favorite one that I found. And then I found like Croatian was duh, like D-U-H. Um, but that was my favorite one was Fantasma. So I just had to share that. <laughs> Every time we go, duh, we're literally calling to ghosts. (laughs) Again, let's assume everything on the internet's true, right? But I thought it was fun. Of course. (laughs) Everything is true. Well, and I appreciate you bringing up that point because I'm basically teaching you a class within the meditation and or hypnosis or combo session. I'm basically, we talk about stuff and I pull from this, you know, treasure trove of gifts that I have. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, here's certainty. Okay. Let's work on this. This is how I learned it. So I'm teaching a class, how to learn about certainty, how to learn how to see your spirit guide, your angel, you know, somebody that keeps displacing your phone charger um, mm-hmm. or taking your keys, right? <laughs> and I'm basically teaching a class in the midst of the meditation. So, and that's pretty much true with all of these. And that's why we wanted to set up this podcast differently than a lot of podcasts because we didn't want to just chat. I wanted to give practical application and practice 
yes these really amazing tools and yes as an aside um there are so many psychic references in so many of the movies we watch yeah uh, you'll hear me refer to um uh the marvel movies the scarlet witch that's hand chakras and moving chi we did that in accu school you know because they teach you in tai chi and qigong how to feel the chi between your hands. And then we played chi bowling and we played chi toss and we played <laughs> chi ball keep away. So, <laughs> which is, it's just the Chinese medicine version of, of, you know, working your hand chakras. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's basic classes in session. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I got some comments on the shirt that I wore. Um, do you remember the shirt that I wore last week? No. It had a little winged animals on it. Ha did it have oh bats? Yes. Bats. <laughs> well, I kept getting notices that um when I wore it or when I wear it. I act particularly goofy, to which I said, <laughs> well, I am bat shirt crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> oh. So I have two jokes this morning. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I like <laughs> I'll be playing here all week. Um, so what are we, what portion of the I ain't afraid of no ghosts part two what what lesson are we moving into this week, my dear? You know, I have lots. Of, well, since you're the teacher, you'll have the lesson, I'm sure. But I have lots of questions for you that might help guide our lesson. Fire away. <laughs> if you guys can see me, I'm like, let me get my notes. <laughs> you didn't know I was going to test you, huh? <laughs> I'm ready for you. No gotcha questions. I know. I'm ready. Um, so we were going to talk about stuck beings yes, and like haunted places. So I hope to start the discussion, this is fascinating to me. Like it oh. is so just, that's why I'm yeah. talking about all the stuff. Oh yeah. There's, there's do a, you think that, mm -hmm. do you think that there's places that are more haunted than others? Or do you think it's just, do you think, I don't know how to word my question, but basically, do you think people, beings get stuck in certain places more than others? Ooh, good interview question. I know. <laughs> question one. That is a really good interview question. Um, and as I teach these classes, um, I respond to them with my teachings, with my truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that truth evolves. Um, and Absolutely. Then whatever I say is what's real in my universe. But I will okay. tell you to look for yourself. You know, when you look at this campground or this house or this graveyard, how many do you see? You mm -hmm. know, what do you feel in your sphere? Um, are there, so are there places that can be more haunted or have more stuck beings let's define a stuck being what do you think a stuck being is yeah oh so to me a stuck being and this goes right back to what we like started this series on right mm -hmm. a stuck being almost has because the word stuck like a negative like they can't get out they can't they're stuck there. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not all, you know, all beings without bodies aren't all stuck to me. But like you said, everybody, everybody's mm -hmm. a little better. But to me, they're not all stuck. Like some are just visiting. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. To me, stuck beings are, they just, a stuck being would be, they, they're, they can't move on. There's something else. There's something... Yeah. Maybe they want to get across to somebody something that needs to happen mm -hmm. yeah. until they become um, unstuck. <laughs> well, yeah, 
just like a stuck human being. Um, and again, this is my truth. When you look right. at yourself, when you invite someone onto the stage into the spotlight, what information do they share with you? And again, sit with certainty. Um, I had an interaction yesterday and I was fairly certain <laughs> the first half of it. And I kind of lost my certainty in the second half. And I got a little bit into my emotions. Uh huh. Was able to ground, but um, certainty, 101 uses. So a stuck being is exactly what you said. Um, and to preframe my truth, I believe that a stuck being is someone that was here on the planet, planet Earth, in a body. Okay. Okay. Now. Could there be stuck beings that have never had a body? Why not? Hmm. Okay. So, okay. but my truth around it is a stuck being is someone that had a body and their body perished in one fashion or another. Um, and that spirit that was housed in that body hasn't gone up to the supreme being or hasn't gone on to their next adventure and yes for the for those that are in it i do believe in reincarnation <laughs> um i'm fine if you don't that's mm -hmm. okay too um so and with that being said stuck beings can have more or less energy around them Right. Ooh. We work with auras all the time. Right. So if a stuck being still has work to do or still has, like you were mentioning, maybe they need to say goodbye or maybe they have a message for someone. Um, we're talking to one of my clients. We keep trying to talk to her. Recently departed brother-in-law. Because he mm -hmm. keeps telling me that he's hidden money all over the place. <laughs> and I want to talk about some of it, but we're trying to get from him. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before you skip out completely, <laughs> you leave us some breadcrumbs. Um, uh, so, um, but if, and this is where, you know, we want to do everything with as much consciousness as possible. So if there's, someone you need to talk to or a life's dream that you're putting off, you know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. So try right. to um, not pass with your music still inside you. So, and when you look and all of you will be great at seeing beings, great at, at seeing apparitions and ghosts or poltergeists or phantasms, <laughs> um, if you practice this and if you practice it with certainty so some ghosts we're just going to simplify and use that term may when you see them when you see them with your third eye not necessarily a you know piece of fancy equipment on a television show um there may be more definition more you might see more from that individual. And that's why I say you might just see a glob of energy or a, a glob of light or an orb, okay? Mm -hmm. That might be all the energy there is left. And um, whereas when individuals see like the whole person, my truth is they have more energy still left on the earth plane. And so there's more to see. Okay. Did I paint that picture okay? Yeah. I yeah. feel like graphics would have been great for this. <laughs> PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Pull it up. Yes. So stuck beings, um, and it will depend on where it's stuck. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I told you my mom's office was across from the Molly Brown house. She worked there for 20 yes. years. Um, uh, for 10, I was close to her and I never once went there. And that's one of those places that's supposed to be haunted. Um, but you can drive past a building or an open lot or, you know, um, a business center 
And yes, this will over time give you the certainty to do house and office healings because sometimes mm -hmm. business or sleep or relationships are affected because there's being stuck in the house. Now, Amityville mm -hmm. Horror would not happen on my watch because I, me and my team of psychics will just be hooking those people up. Like, I've got the body now. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to get the <laughs> mm -hmm. Come for the chat. Do not stay if you don't have a body. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exit right. Yes. yes. And, um, you know, and I always watch the, um, read the uh, uh, Catter Day on Twitter. <laughs> you know, the silly cat videos. And they had one, does your cat ever sit and look at a corner like this? And I was like, <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> He's yep. so close. Aww. Yeah, I've always just, and again, I don't know if it's, that's why I asked the question because <laughs> it's almost one of those, is it because of, uh, you know, movies and books that everybody makes it out to like tragic events mm -hmm. there's ghosts or old houses which you know history and lots and lots of years and kind of makes sense but you know they almost make it sound like if there's a tragic event there's probably ghosts there and and it may or may not be so right because right. it might be the karma of that individual that consciously or otherwise, like I decided that I'm going to go out, you know? Yep. And I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, um, I think it's, it go, this goes back to certainty, but I, <sighs> are going to be like, no, you don't. But when I have my eyes closed and I'm really focused on, you know, seeing that person, talking to that person, I can do it. If I'm in a house or a building or someplace else, I might be like, oh, this place is a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. You're spicy. But the spidey senses go off. That's just it. Like it kind of gives me like a who something going on here. Yeah. But you know, nobody nobody stands out. Stands out, right? Mm -hmm. They stand, um, you know, floats out. Whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> yeah. And um, no. uh, so we have um, um, we've got walked. Me and my friends, we've walked by buildings, and we're like, oh, that place is. We use the term haunted, um, but it's got a lot of beings, you know. Now, in my personal practice, I tend to get cluttered with beings because I have a lot of people that walk in. And sometimes we don't walk alone, even though we have a single body, we might be carrying a lot of beings with us. If you have somebody that switches personalities or switches moods on a dime mm -hmm. they're probably running a different being this is a different class this will be in 2023 <laughs> oh yay <laughs> <laughs> but they might be just running a different being that's why stay grounded stay in the center of your head use your bubble those are the foundation tools and if you're in an office or a place where you feel your spidey sense is going ah Trust that. Be certain. Uh -huh. Make yeah. sure you're bubbled up. Make sure you're grounded. Make sure you're in the center of your head. And then if you so choose, you know, and in my head, it looks like, you know, the tube when they beam you up in, on Star Trek. I'm yes. old. Okay. But you know that? So when I say hook them up to the Supreme being, the Supreme being is God or universe or pure love or wherever we hang out before we get a body. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I'll just ask them like, do you need a cab? <laughs> do you need a lift? 
And um, I'll just, you know, anybody that's ready to go, I let them go. Now, in my own personal space, in my own uh, house or my own office, if you're not um, a sentry being or somebody that I've called into the space, no, you have to get out. So that was just what I was going to say, too, is that's probably certainty and going back to what you've been saying since well day one but especially the start of our ghost series is that you are superior to any being without a body so if you don't want them yeah you, yeah there you go senior that's a much better word uh yeah if you don't want them in they're not coming in because you're telling them no or if they cross the threshold you know hook them up and it's easy you could just pretend that it's happening you know, yeah. a lot of these tools, we work with just active imagination, right? right? Just yeah. imagine that it's done. And then we say, set your intention, set your intention that you're hooking a being up that came into your space and won't leave. Just set your intention that when you, you know, spock them up, yeah. <laughs> bring them yeah. up, that it happens. Just and that's certainty and that seniority and um, and that works with thoughts. Um, I have a patient mm -hmm. that's very fearful and she says, but what if this and what if this? And we had the certainty talk just about that chatter. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, you are senior to any thought that isn't for your highest good. See, people. Yeah. These lessons, 101 uses. <laughs> Certainty, you know, like at least once every six weeks or so, at least. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, do you have any other questions before we? No, well, this is, and this is your, I think you kind of answered it, but I'm looking at my little notes here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This kind of probably goes into what we'll be talking about next week. So mm -hmm. I'll ask the question. If we want to leave it as a cliffhanger for next week, we can do that. But do saucy you, little tart you are. Yeah. So do you see? It's going to sound so cheesy, but OK, you know how um, certain TV shows will be like, I see somebody standing to your left. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's like for you? Sometimes, and you choose, you know, is that something? And you know, are there a bunch of people in your space that you're like, come on, guys, leave me alone for right now? No, I ground a lot and I'm on release a lot. And so, um, and I've been doing this long enough that most beings, not all, you know, and we all lose our space. So, guys, there's going to be time when you forget and you lose your space and say something huh? or, um, <laughs> anyway, um, but I've been doing this long enough that, you know, I can do this stuff in the blink of an eye, in a thought, in a breath and bubble up, yeah. you know, and it's all done. Um, I often will mirror the language of who am, whomever I'm talking to. Okay. So if they say, yes, like my grandma likes to hang out in my kitchen. Grandma is no longer in a body. Grandma passed on. Uh -huh. She likes to rearrange the forks. <laughs> I will talk to the individual in that language. Like, yes, that's, you know, where her happy memories are. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that individual to loop back to your first question may or may not be stuck. Right. Maybe they want to hang out. But the whole point of this thing is not to fear grandma who likes to rearrange the forks. Right. No, what I imagined was that, you know, you, <laughs> you or other people just walk into places and you're like, oh, this place is busy. Like there's a lot of beings and whether they're stuck or not. So if you want to play listening audience, Go into a bar in an old, old building, like a hundred plus year old building. Yeah. Just go into a bar 
And I recommend not drinking, like just have a non-alcoholic beverage because drinking takes you out of your body. And report back to me. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll okay. talk about it on an episode. <laughs> They actually do their own tours. Yeah. Because it's such an old building and it's along the river and the railroad system, mm-hmm. supposedly it was part of that too. And it's a bar. bar. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's been on TV all that. So yeah, it's just, I've always, uh, you know, and wondered I wondered what it was like if you tour, walked into places. But with these tools. Right. You know, like, what do you see? You know? <laughs> well, that's, yep. And then back to certainty. Like, what you see well, is what you see. I'll tell one more story um, before yeah. we go. So I did a house healing on a very old home in Long Beach. And um, and so it had a lot of stuck energy, a lot of stuck beings. And so I could see who was where, when, and why they're taking up space now. And this particular being liked to take clothes, or one of them, there were a bunch, liked to take clothes off the hangers and throw them on the floor. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so I told him, and it was like poor people looking in the window in the depression when it was cold, and the family that lived in the house had food, and these there were all these people, you know, looking in their windows because they didn't have food. Right. So my buddy went to the historical records and um, looked up because all of that stuff is very. And he was like, "Oh my God, yes!" And they had a play, they had a piano over here, and it was a doctor, and that's what you know. And this other family was this. So sometimes your shit can get verified, and <laughs> um, which tends to drive up your certainty. Absolutely. Um, but um, yeah, so. These tools are to make you excited, encouraged, lively, anything that's not fearful or fear-based. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Yep. No, I'm excited. That's, yeah, I just get excited about it. (laughs) (laughs) So everybody, um, we may take a break for a couple of sponsors so I can get my space for this one because it's a little juicier if you are getting ready to jump into the meditation with us no driving no operating heavy machinery you know the gist be safe safety first safety first so get in a comfortable place y'all and close your eyes And Kaylin, would you like to run us in just a couple, three rounds of box breathing or, I don't know, yeah. healer's choice. Let's just get here in our bodies because this is a kind of a juicy topic, even if we're mm-hmm. bringing light and amusement to it. Yes, let's do three rounds of some box breathing. So we're going to breathe in deep for four. Hold for four. Out for four, hold for four, two more times. Are, are we on the last one? Because I, because <laughs> I was kind of doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, because I, my my chi rises when I get enthusiastic about it fun topic like this so everyone please find yourself a nice comfortable seat 
Like just kick back. Be in the center of your head. Be a point of light behind your eyes and in between your temples. If anybody's in there with you, anybody with or without a body, kick them out. Center of your head is for you and you alone. That's your sixth chakra, the number six. Your intuition, your psychic sense, a place where you can look at information from a place of neutrality. Be in your bubble and look around your bubble. Is it a little tattered and torn? Is it a little Swiss cheesy, some holes in it? Go through and just make sure that your aura, your energy field, that bubble is whole all directions around you. And then get yourself a grounding cord, an energetic connection between the base of your spine and the center of the earth. I like to use a tube of light. You might use a tree trunk, giant carrot, big rope, chain, whatever makes sense that can tether you, but also acts as a garbage chute for any energies that you're ready to let go of. And for this particular one, run a little gold energy through the center of your head. Really clean that out. And again, we're just using our imaginations. Just intend that this is working, and it does. And imagine that your grounding cord is 10% bigger. 10% more effective, 10% stronger, 10% better at keeping you tethered, keeping you grounded. And notice how that feels in your space. So in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble, we're going to review last week. So imagine a stage. You can imagine that you're in a theater and looking at a stage, or you can imagine a stage hovering out there in space on the outside of your bubble. Whatever works for you. Make it as stark or as elaborate as you like. And you're the only one looking at this stage. There's no one else in the audience. This stage is just for you. It's one of your tools. And however you set up your stage, turn a spotlight on in the center of the stage. And what we're going to ask to present to you today is any being that's not in a body. So dial up your certainty and the being without a body might look like a box. It might look like a sphere. It might look like um, a light. It might look like a banana. It might look like a person. It might look like nothing. Maybe you don't see anything at all. All are correct answers. You can't do this wrong. And so for this particular practice, Rod, it's just a being. Nobody necessarily that you know. 
or no one that's passed on that you know, just, just an anybody or an any being, as vague and general as you can. And when you see that being, and right now the only person I can hear is Caitlin. So when you see that being on the center of your stage in the spotlight, let me know. Kaylin, do you have a being yet? I do. Okay, and what does yours look like? Oops. Critter. Um, uh, little lizard, little. Perfect. Critter. Critter. <laughs> Can't describe. There you go. That's for little, that. That is a little, right answer. They can look like anything. So say hello to whatever you see that is identified as a being, and be certain. Dial up your certainty another ten percent. Whatever you see is what you see. And then invite whatever you see to exit the stage. Maybe they just poof, disappear. Maybe they exit stage left. And so let's try it one more time. Bring, look at your stage. Have the spotlight on the center of the stage. The theater or wherever you're sitting is empty. The stage is empty. Until you ask for another being to show up and present itself. Step into the spotlight. And again, no wrong answers. And first impressions. So, Kaylin, when you have your being, let me know. I do. Awesome. What'd you get this time? A pink flower. Beautiful. So, take a moment and have your being. Take a look at it. Maybe spin it around. And know that you now have the tools, the technique, the gift of seeing a being that no longer has a body. Yay. Class is in session. Okay. Now, go ahead and allow that pink flower or the being that you saw Allow that to disappear. Maybe it goes poof. Maybe it exits stage left. Maybe you have a trap door. Maybe it gets sucked up into the uh, spotlight energy. Like it's getting beamed up. And for this next part of this meditation, healing, being clearing exercise lesson that we're doing, pick a place, a small place that you visit or frequent. I don't want you to do your home or your office um, or any friends' homes or offices that we're going to save for later. So if you go to the bank, or if you go to a bodega, or if you go to a park or a yoga class, just pick a place that you go. 
and see it in your mind's eye. Imagine that it's hovering out in space, either on the stage or in place of the stage. And when you have the place that you frequent, let me know. So, Kaylin, where is okay. some place that you go? Mm. Physical therapy. I knew it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Physical therapy. That is a great one to practice with. So, because you don't have a lot of attachments to it, homes and right. friends' houses and things, we have too much attachment. So, in your mind's eye, make whatever place you're looking at, make it a, a, a box, you know, six sides, floor, ceiling, four walls. Okay. It might have more than that. It might have a hallway. For this exercise, it doesn't matter. We're simplifying. So in your mind's eye, see that place in as vague or simple as you can. And what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that you have psychic luminol. Do you know what luminol is? Luminol is the stuff that you spray on urine or blood or other organic samples and you turn a black light on and if it's there, it'll look blue, it'll iridesce. So we're gonna pretend that you have some psychic luminol and this luminol is specific for beings. So what you're gonna do is imagine that you're spraying this psychic luminol all over this place, floors, walls, and ceiling. And now you're going to imagine that you turn off the lights but turn on a black light. And again, you cannot do this wrong. You cannot do this wrong. What you see is what you see and you might not see anything or you might see iridescent blue splatters everywhere. So Kaylin, in the box that represents your physical therapy, when you spray the psychic luminol, turn off the overhead lights and turn on the black light, how much iridescent blue do you see in your PT? Mm, it's not everywhere. I think I see maybe two, two blobs. <laughs> awesome. On opposite sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that represents yeah. a being. You've just used psychic luminol to see if there's any beings left in PT. And so just for brevity, go ahead and allow these beings to simply beam up. Just say hello and let them beam up. You know, like they're being sucked into, um, you know, the, what do they call It's not a tractor beam. Um, that thing on um, Star Trek. Mm. Anyway. They did one on Willy Wonka too, for that matter. Very psychic imagery. So you still have the black light on and look around that space again and see if you missed any spots because these this shit likes to hide. See if you see any other smudges with your psychic luminol. or blobs, they could be on the wall, they could be just hovering in the room. 
And again, this is a space that you frequent. So you know kind of the lay of the land, but it's not an important place for you. It is clean. Beautiful. So if you need another minute or two to clear out the beings of the place that you saw and wherever you've done that, they should thank you because you just gave their space a healing. And then go ahead and let that box disappear. So be in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. And be certain that you have tools, active imagination, tools to see beings. So when you go into that place and go, whoa, energy doesn't feel good bubble up be in the center of your head make sure you're grounded and imagine that you're spraying that space with your psychic luminol and then turn on the black light and see what you see if it's enough that you're going whoa Probably some energy or some beings there that are ready to take their next step, are ready to move on in their karmic journey. And so be proud that you were able to see them and help them. And also know that those beings, my truth, more likely than not, are grateful that you could see them. Much like in the movie Ghost. Oh my God, you can see us? Or in the television show Ghost. That's adorable. Um, yes. Seeing beings is a gift that we are all born with. We just forget it. And so I'm helping you restore the gifts that you already have, your gifts of healing, your gifts of seeing, your gifts of being. So be in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. And for you, push your bubble out another 10%. So if your bubble is three feet from your center point, make it three feet and a few inches. Push it out, make it a little bigger around you in all directions, over your head, behind you, under you. And in your own space, in your own bubble, Spray it with your psychic luminol. Over your head, on the sides, under your feet, behind you. Make sure you get behind you. And then when you're ready, in your imagination, turn off the lights in your bubble and turn on the black light. And what do you see? Who's in there with you? Kaylin, you got any visitors? You got any people tagging on, tagging along? Mm, I do not. I have several hangers on. Mm -hmm. So I'm cleaning them out, hooking them up. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Mm. and be amused. 
love yourself enough to clear your own space. Be senior to whatever you've come up against. I had a Zoom call yesterday, and even though I made separation, you know, sometimes people can hang out in your space. This is a tool. that you can that if any energies that are not yours are in your bubble they have to go whether you see them or not but with practice you will start seeing beings and in the next episode we will begin to name them who do you got? So when you're ready, let's come out of trance. Open your eyes. Stretch. Take a deep breath. Ooh, Ooh that's contagious. <sighs> you are psychic. Mm. You can see beings. Wouldn't it be fun to be, you know, in one of those places on those shows and walk in and see what you see. Yeah. You know, without fear and go, are you stuck? Would you like mm -hmm. to do you, you want me to hail you a cab? Okay. <laughs> I mean, Fuck. what do you think the, the ghost would like better? You or some um camera crew that's making you out to be the boogeyman? Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? They are probably pestered. Like they are probably the ones that are pestered. Like seriously, you guys are gonna keep coming in here. <laughs> can you send somebody else? I never else? thought like, of that. That's hysterical. Yeah. Can you yes. just send somebody else? <laughs> it's like we are ready to step off, but you know, <laughs> I'll do something about it, please. <laughs> Not your cameras. Yeah. And speaking of the movie Ghost, you know when. Patrick Swayze walked into the light. That's a great visual. Yeah. For, you know, hailing someone a cab, letting them go with, with love and grace. Like, mm -hmm. thank you. So by doing these tools, I ain't afraid of no ghost. You're actually giving a karmic gift to a being. Yay. Yes. Yeah, we're uh, around here. We ain't afraid of no ghosts. No way. Thank you for teaching us. You bet. Thank you for listening to us. <laughs> well, I'm Dr. Cynthia Smith. I'm Kaylin, and this is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast, where we invited you to come for the chat, stay for the cleansing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Indeed. Bye. Bye.